Like many of the mainland counties of the UK, the Isle of Wight once hosted an extensive railway network. This self-contained system, which linked to ferry services bound for the south coast of England, going through many iterations and operators across its near 190-year history, as well as giving rise to many quirks not found on the regular British railways. For context, the Isle of Wight is the largest island in England, and is situated approximately 2 to 5 miles south of the Hampshire coast of the mainland United Kingdom, covering 148 square miles and being home to a population of 141,500 people, the county town of the island being Newport, located near the north coast, on the estuary of the River Medina, while connections to the mainland are made via frequent ferry and hovercraft services to Portsmouth, Southampton and Lymington. As for the history of the railways on the island, the first route to be built was a 2,500-yard narrow-gauge line opened in 1833 on the estate of retired architect John Nash, who utilised horse-drawn wagons as a means of transporting brick-making materials to and from a jetty on the Solent, but was eventually abandoned after around 10 to 15 years of use. The first conventional railway system on the Isle of Wight came following the establishment of the Cowes and Newport Railway Company in 1859, who proposed an 11-mile route from Ryde in the north, which was the main ferry port to the mainland, and Ventnor in the south, which was a major holiday resort during the Victorian era, the approval to build this railway being passed through the Isle of Wight Railway Act of July 23, 1860, while during the construction of the main line between Ryde and Ventnor, another short route was built between Cowes and Newport at a length of four and a half miles, which began operation from June 16, 1862. Building the ride to Ventnor main line presented several unique challenges, the most notable being the proposal to introduce direct train connections onto Ride Pier, the second longest pier in the UK after Southend Pier in Essex, and where ferries bound for England would arrive and depart due to the depth of the harbour at this location, a horse-drawn tramway eventually being established from 1864, which coincided with the opening of the first phase of the main line between Ride St John's Road and Shanklin a seaside resort just north of Ventnor on the southeast coast of the island, with final connection to Ventnor itself not being completed until 1866 due to the requirement to build a 1,300-yard tunnel through St Boniface Down, emerging at the immediate end of the station platforms, while in order to accommodate the station, a large part of the hillside had been excavated to produce an expansive quarry. In 1875, connections between the Ride to Ventnor main line and the Cowes and Newport Railway were provided through two cords which left the main line from the north and south, the north-facing cord breaking off at Smallbrook Junction near Brading and travelling via Ashey and Haven Street, while the south-facing cord diverged at Sandown and wiggled its way to Merston, Newport eventually becoming the central junction station with connections all across the island to the port at Ride in the east, the resort of Ventnor in the south and the harbour at Cowes in the north. In 1877, the London Brighton and South Coast Railway and the London and South Western Railway, which both operated cross-channel and Isle of Wight ferry services, were granted by Act of Parliament the ability to construct a dedicated railway line from the Ride Pier Head to the station at Ride St John's Road, with onward connections to the Isle of Wight Central Railway, this route being completed in 1880 and reducing the Ride Tramway to simply a leisure service that ran along the pier only while in 1882, a short branch from the Shanklin main line at Brading to Bembridge was constructed, serving a large natural harbour between Bembridge and St Helens stations, this also providing a short-lived train ferry from Bembridge Harbour to the Hailing Island branch in mainland England, allowing briefly, for the first time, a proxy direct connection between the rail systems of the island and the rest of the UK. Extending west for the first time in 1889, the Freshwater, Yarmouth and Newport Railway ran a 12-mile route from Newport to Yarmouth to connect with ferry services to Lymington, with onward connections via the railway station at Lymington Pier, services on its line being operated by the Central Railway under a mutual agreement, while in 1897, the final addition to the Isle of Wight Railway network came with the opening of the Newport Godsill and St Lawrence Railway's Ventnor West branch line from Merston on the Sandown Newport line to St Lawrence on the south coast, opened originally to St Lawrence before being extended to Ventnor West in 1900, this route again falling under the auspices of the Central Railway. At its fullest extent, the Isle of Wight Railway system incorporated 55 and a half miles of track, with the exception of the tramway the primary income for the network being on highly popular summer resort passenger services between the ferry ports of Yarmouth, Cowes and Ryde to Shanklin and Ventnor, although there was also an element of freight operations which comprised mostly domestic coal supply for businesses and residents, and was shipped in from the British mainland to the harbour at Bembridge. 
In 1903, in order to improve connections between the Isle of Wight and the mainland, as contemporary steam ferries were slow and cumbersome machines, Parliament authorised the creation of a railway tunnel, which would begin to the southwest of Yarmouth, run beneath the narrowest section of the Solent, and emerge to the east of Milford-on-Sea, connecting to the London and Southwestern Railway's main line to Southampton, the two-and-a-half-mile-long tunnel project being mooted in various guises in 1903, 1904, and 1909, before all talk of the scheme was abandoned following the outbreak of World War I in 1914. Following the passing of the Railways Act of 1921, which sought to reduce the hundreds of individual railway companies currently at work across the UK network, the Isle of Wight Central Railway was absorbed into the ranks of the Southern Railway from 1923, followed six months later by the Freshwater, Yarmouth and Newport Railway due to financial wrangling. The Southern, Seeing the potential of the island line as a major tourist corridor during the summer months, investing heavily in new infrastructure and rolling stock, replacing the aged coaches and steam locomotives with 23 X LSWR 02 class locomotives that dated back to 1889, starting a trend of hand-me-down rolling stock that continues to this day. In order to improve summer capacity, the Southern also implemented track layout upgrades which included a new double-track section from Braiding to Sandown, new passing loops at Haven Street and Roxall stations, and point work at Smallbrook Junction, while also introducing the island's first name train, the Tourist, which operated from Ventnor to Freshwater via Sandown, Merstone and Newport. Aside from a downturn in tourist traffic during World War II, the island line and its operations remained unchanged right up until the nationalisation of British Railways in 1948, the inclusion of the former Southern Railway into the newly formed British Railways also taking with it the Isle of Wight's extensive network, although by the turn of the 1950s it was apparent to the BR management that many sections of the former Isle of Wight Central Railway and the Freshwater Yarmouth and Newport Railway had been highly unprofitable due to severely low passenger traffic and no justified freight work, these lines only remaining open simply because they held a monopoly on travel across the island in a time before cars and buses were truly established as a transport alternative. Therefore, between 1953 and 1956, the first pruning of the network began with the closure of the former Freshwater Yarmouth and Newport Railway, the Ventnor West Route, the Bembridge Branch, and the Sandown to Newport Line, while in the face of ever-increasing car travel and improvements to the road network on the island during the latter half of the decade, the once popular summer tourist traffic was now being dried up by this new transport mode, and with the profitability of the railway being highly seasonal, the losses of the winter months could no longer be covered by the income of the summer. Therefore, in 1966, under the recommendations of the Beeching Report, all routes out of Newport were closed, severing the line north to Cowes and east to ride via Smallbrook Junction, while the last section of the mainline route to Ventnor was closed and the terminus moved to Shanklin, further proposals being made to close all railways on the island completely by 1970, but these were thankfully dropped due to intervention by the Transport Users Consultative Committee, or TUCC, who stated that the axing of all rail services on the island would lead to traffic chaos on the already overburdened road network, especially in the summer holiday season. With the then Minister of Transport, Barbara Castle, refusing to allow the closure of all railways on the Isle of Wight, British Rail were instead tasked with modernising the sole surviving Ride to Shanklin route through electrification introducing a third rail conductor system energised at 750 volts DC, although due to a persistent problem of flooding in the ride tunnel between Esplanade and St John's Road stations, the trackbed of the railway needed to be raised in order to avoid the third rail system constantly shorting during rainstorms, though this move meant conventional third rail units, such as the two EPB and alike, could not operate through the tunnel due to the reduced clearance. Instead, British Rail took an interest in several X-1923 stock deep-level London Underground trains, which had been recently made redundant following the arrival of new 1959 stock on the Central Line, with 12 withdrawn units, 6 four-car sets and 6 three-car sets, being taken to BR's Stewart's Lane Depot for a comprehensive refurbishment between 1966 and 1967, the trains emerging initially as Class 451 for three-car sets and Class 452 for four-car sets, though this was later revised to Class 486 and 485 respectively and commenced work on the island line from March 20th, 1967, these units usually operating alone when in service, but could be paired in order to increase capacity during the summer peak. Away from the remaining route between Ryde and Shanklin, in January 1971, a group of volunteers purchased one and a half miles of the former line between Smallbrook Junction and Newport in order to create the preserved Isle of Wight Steam Railway, 
initially working between Wooten and Haven Street, before extending to Smallbrook Junction itself in 1991, with a new station constructed which connects directly with mainline services to Ride, the railway operating a variety of ex-British railway steam traction, including an 044W24 tank engine, a Hunslet Austerity 060, and a British Railways 262 Class Ivert. Wearing a variation of British Rail's all-over corporate blue, the Class 485s and 486s remained the power behind the island line throughout the 1970s and into the 1980s, with the train set formations revised in 1985 to have Class 485s extended to five cars and 486s reduced to two cars, followed a year later by the establishment of the Network Southeast sector, which was granted a greater degree of autonomy over its activities. And although several sets were painted in the attractive NSC red, white and blue, by the middle of the decade it was apparent that these 60-year-old trains were in dire need of replacement, primarily due to saltwater corrosion caused by their proximity to the sea, and when operating above the open water when travelling to the station at Ride Pier Head, Network Southeast estimating that by 1990 the units would have become life expired. Therefore, in 1988, Network Southeast turned to the London Underground once again to provide ex-tube stock for the island line, taking an interest in several 1938 stock units, which had been recently refurbished and reinstated after their withdrawal in 1985, so as to provide additional capacity on the Northern Line, Network Southeast eventually taking on 28 ex-London Underground vehicles to form nine two-car units, these train sets being heavily refurbished at Eastley Works and outshopped in Network Southeast livery entering service on the Isle of Wight from October 1989, while the last Class 485s and 486s rumbled on in service until 1992. The X-1938 stock, designated Class 483, would be the mainstay of the Ireland line for the next 30 years, seeing the route through privatisation and its eventual incorporation into the franchise of Southwest Trains and later Southwestern Railway until it ultimately became apparent by the late 2010s that the 80-year-old units were clearly reaching the end of their useful lives, and thus another breed of former London Underground stock was called in to replace them, coming in the form of XD78 subsurface stock, recently retired from the district line, these trains being heavily modified by Viva Rail to become the Class 484s. With five of these two-car units converted to Island Line work, their introduction coincided with a major refurbishment of the route infrastructure throughout 2021, the Class 483s running their last services in January of that year, before the line was closed for the rebuilding work, reopening again in November with Class 484s at the helm, the island line now operating a weekday and Saturday service pattern of two trains per hour each way during peak hours, and one train per hour during the weekday off-peak, Saturday off-peak, and on Sundays and bank holidays. To summarise, the Isle of Wight Railway represents a microcosm of the wider British railway network as a whole, being formed through several different companies and operating across a much vaster network which once sported a significant amount of infrastructure, only today for it to be something of a shadow of its former self as cutbacks in the 1950s and 60s trimmed down the track mileage and left many important regional centres out of the reach of railway services. However, what sections of the Isle of Wight Railway remain play an important part in the general operation of the island, providing a sustainable transport alternative to the often congested road network during the summer months, as well as being a novelty among the railways of the UK. With its major refurbishment in 2021 and the arrival of the Class 484s ensuring its continued use well into the future.